guys are, are going nuts here. This is a this is a real uh, Bitcoin giveaway. It, it's not illegal. Please do not report the stream. Uh, <laughs> we are doing this as a service to y'all. And if you don't appreciate it, we will stop. Um, but I love giving out Bitcoin to you guys. And we're going to continue to do that. So please just ignore any of the the trolls in the comments telling you otherwise. Um, again, so happy to have Matt Odell on. I should have that interview packaged up and out for you guys over the weekend. We've got a couple other great videos lined up for you guys. So please don't forget to like and subscribe to stay on up to date with all the content that uh, Bitcoin Magazine is putting out. Um, today, like to wrap things up, to wrap up the year, I want us to bust some, bust some FUD. That's fear, uncertainty, and doubt coming specifically out of the man who has like quite a lot of uh, undue influence on the market, Elon Musk. Um, so we're going to watch a, a section of Lex Friedman's recent interview with Elon Musk, and we're going to talk about Elon's comments as they relate to Bitcoin, uh, crypto, smart contracts. I think Elon uh, generally is continuing to be intellectually dishonest. I'm not calling him dumb. I'm not calling him a fraud. Um, regardless what I think about Tesla or how he made his money. I, but I do think when he talks about Bitcoin, he genuinely either hasn't put in the time to research it, uh, to research it, or he, he is being intellectually dishonest. So most of what he's saying about Bitcoin is deluded and wrong. And so we're going to talk about this point by point so that anyone who's listening that, that, that follows Elon can know that, um, that is not uh, an area of his expertise. So it's fine that he's wrong. I mean, we've all been wrong. I'm in wrong about a lot of things. I confused uh, encryption with uh, the hashing algorithm while talking to Matt. Perfect example. People are wrong about all, all kinds of things, and that's fine. The issue is when it comes to Bitcoin, like separating the truth from the fear, uncertainty, and doubt is of utmost urgency. Musk's uh, Elon Musk has an massive online following and can move markets with his tweets and opinions. So there are dire consequences to him effectively lying and misguiding the market on Bitcoin. That being said, I don't agree with him on Bitcoin. I don't believe he understands money very well, despite him being the richest man in the world. Um, it's hard to believe, but based on the things that he has said, it would appear that he does not understand what money outside of the fiat system is um i do support however his right to say whatever he wants so we're here you know clapping back my issue is i can't figure out the angle for musk why is he doing this is he trying to suppress the bitcoin price so he can buy more is he just ego tripping and having fun messing with people i rather think it's more a function of ignorance he's a busy guy hasn't really looked into it. Um, no one in his life, this is also a function of no one in his life is telling him no. You're the richest man in the world. No one's telling you you're wrong um, to your to your face. So he's surrounded by yes men. Uh, his haircut is testament to that. So when it comes to Bitcoin, I mean, he's going to keep digging. Uh, we're going to see him on more shows in 2022. And to prep for that, we're going to dispel some of the myths that he often repeats after this short clip uh, actually it's a rather it's a pretty good uh, segment we're going to watch here about elon and uh, lex friedman so without further ado here's your clip so let me be the guy you, you posted a meme on twitter recently where there's there's, there's like a, a row of urinals a guy just walks all the way across oh, sure, yeah. and he tells you about crypto <laughs> so, 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 listen, so, listen, I, I mean that's how to be so many times, I think maybe even literally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think technologically speaking, there's any room for ideas of smart contracts or, or so on? Because you mentioned laws. Um, that's an interesting implement use of things like smart contracts to implement the laws by which governments function. Like something built on Ethereum or maybe a dog coin that enables smart contracts somehow. I never, I don't quite understand this whole smart contract thing. Um, you know, I, I mean, it, <laughs> so it's I'm a, too dumb to understand small contracts. Um, <laughs> that's a good line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my general approach to any kind of like deal or whatever is just make sure there's clarity of understanding. That's the most important thing. Right. 
um, and and just keep any kind of deal very very short and simple, plain language, um, and just make sure everyone understands this is the deal. Does everyone is it clear? Um, and uh, and and what are the consequences if various things don't happen? Um, but usually deal, deals are um, you know business deals or whatever are way too long and complex and overly lawyered and pointlessly. You mentioned that uh, Doge is the, the people's coin. Yeah. Um, and you said that you were literally going, SpaceX may consider literally putting uh, a Doge coin on the moon. Is, yeah. it, is this something you're still considering? Uh, Mars, perhaps? Uh, do you think there's some chance, we've talked about political systems on Mars, that uh, Dogecoin is the, the official currency of Mars at some <laughs> point in the future? Well, I think Mars itself will need to have a different currency because you can't synchronize due to speed of light, mm. or not easily. Um, so it must be completely standalone from Earth. Well, yeah, because the the Mars is at closest approach, it's four light minutes away, roughly, and then at furthest approach, uh, it's roughly twenty light minutes away, um, maybe a little more. Um, so you can't really have uh, something synchronizing. You know, if you if if you've got a twenty minute speed of light issue, if it's got a one minute blockchain, uh, it's it's not going to synchronize properly. Um, so Mars would, need, would I, I don't know if Mars would have a cryptocurrency as a thing, but probably seems likely. Um, but it would be some kind of localized uh, thing on Mars. Um, and you let the people decide. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the the future of Mars should be up to the Martians. Uh, yeah, so. Um, I mean, I think the cryptocurrency thing is an interesting approach to reducing the um, error in the the database that is called money. Um, you know, I think I have a pretty deep understanding of the of what money actually is on a practical day to day basis because of PayPal. Um, you know, we really got in deep there. Um, and r right now, the money system actually for you know, practical purposes is, is, is really a bunch of uh, heterogeneous uh, mainframes running uh, old COBOL. <laughs> okay, you mean literally, that's literally, that, that literally what's happening in yeah. batch mode. Okay, in batch mode. Yeah, I uh, pity the poor bastards who have to maintain that code. Okay, that's a as a pain, that's pain. Not even Fortran, it's COBOL, yep. It's COBOL. It's like, and they still, the banks are still buying mainframes in 2021 <laughs> and running ancient COBOL code. Uh, and, uh, you know, the the Federal Reserve is like probably even older than the, what the banks have and they have an old COBOL <laughs> mainframe. <laughs> and so, now the, and, and so the, the, the government effectively has editing privileges on the, on the money database. Um, and they use those editing privileges to um, make more money <laughs> whenever they want. And this increases the error in the database that is money. So if you, I think money should really be viewed through the lens of uh, information theory. And, uh, and so it's uh, you know, kind of like, uh, like an internet connection, like what's the bandwidth, uh, you know, to total bit rate, uh, what is the latency, jitter, uh, packet drop, uh, you know, Errors in, errors in the network uh, communication. Just think of money like that, basically. Um, I think that's probably the right way to think of it. And and then say what what system, uh, from an information theory standpoint, allows an economy to function the best, uh, and you know, um, crypto is an attempt to reduce the the error uh, in. Uh, in, in money that is contributed by uh, governments uh, diluting the money supply uh, as basically a pernicious, a pernicious form of taxation. So both policy in terms of with inflation and actual like technological cobalt, like cryptocurrency takes us into the 21st century in terms of the actual systems that allow you to do the transaction, to store wealth, all those kinds of things. Like I said, just in think theory. of money as information. People um, often will think of money as having power in and of itself. Um, 
It does not. Money is uh, is information, and it, it does not have power in and of itself. Uh, like the, you know, again, applying the the physics tools of thinking about things in the limit is helpful. If you are stranded on a tropical island, um, and uh, you have a trillion dollars, it's useless because there's no there's no resource allocation. Mon money is a database for resource allocation. But there's no resources to allocate except yourself, so money is useless. Um, uh, if you're stranded on a desert island with no food, you'd, uh, all the Bitcoin in the world will not stop you from starving. Yeah. So, um, so like just just think of money as as a database for resource allocation. Um, across time and space, and um, and then what 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 system uh, it, it is what what in what form should that that database or data system what 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 would be most effective? Now the, the, there's a there is a fundamental issue with um, say Bitcoin in its current form uh, in that it's the transaction volume is very limited. Um, and uh, the latency, it's, it's the, the latency for, for a properly confirmed transaction is too, is too long, much longer than you'd like. So it's not, it's actually not great from um, a transaction volume standpoint or a latency standpoint. Um, uh, so it is perhaps useful as, as to, to solve an aspect of the money database problem uh, which is the sort of store of wealth or an, an, an accounting of relative obligations, I suppose. Um, but it is not useful as a currency, as a day-to-day -day currency. But people have proposed different technological solutions. Like Lightning. The, yeah, Lightning Network and the layer two technologies on top of that. I mean, it's it's all, it seems to be all kind of a trade-off, but the point is, it's kind of brilliant to say that just think about it, information, think about what kind of database what kind of infrastructure enables that yeah, exchange say like you're operating an economy um and you need to have some thing that it, uh, allows for the efficient to, to, to have efficient uh, value ratios between products and services so you've got this massive number of products and services and you need to you, you can't just barter, barter. <laughs> it's just like that would be extremely unwieldy uh, so you need something that gives you the the uh, 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 a ratio of exchange between goods and services, um, and and then something that allows you to uh, shift obligations across time, like debt, debt and equity shift obligations across time. Then what does what what does the best job of that? Um, part of the reason why I think there's some um, merit to Dogecoin, even though it was obviously created as a joke, um, is that it it actually does have a much higher uh, transaction volume capability than Bitcoin, um, and the you know the, the the costs of doing a transaction, the 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 Dogecoin fee is is very low. Like right now, if you want to do a Bitcoin transaction, the price of doing that transaction is very high, so you could not use it effectively for, for most things, um, and, and nor, nor could it even scale to a high volume. Um, uh, and when Bitcoin was, you know, started, I guess around 2008 or something like that, um, the internet connections were much worse than they are today, like order of magnitude. Couple, I mean, it, there's the way, way worse, you know, in 2008. So, so like having a, you know, a small uh, block size or whatever is, you know, and and a long synchronization time is made sense in 2008. But to, you know, 2021 or fast forward. Ten years, it, it's like it's it's like comically low, you know. It's uh, so, um, and I think there's some value to having a linear increase in the amount of currency that uh, is generated. Um, so because some amount of the currency, you'd like like if a, if a, if, a, if a currency is too deflationary, or, or like uh, or should say if if. If a, if a currency is expected to increase in value over time, you, there's reluctance to spend it because they're like, oh, I, if I, I'll just hold it and not spend it because its scarcity is increasing with time. So if I spend it now, then I will regret spending it. So I'd 
we'll just you know hodl it <laughs> mm -hmm. um but if there's some dilution of the currency occurring over time that's that's more of an incentive to use it as a currency so um dogecoin just somewhat randomly has uh a um just a, a fixed a number of of sort of coins or hash strings that uh are generated every year so there's there's some inflation but it's not a percentage base it's a it's, it's, it's so that the it's a fixed number so the percentage of inflation will necessarily decline over time. Um, so it, it just, I, I, I'm not saying that it's like the ideal system for a currency, but I think it actually is uh, just fundamentally better than anything else I've seen, just by accident. Um, so I like how you said um, around 2008. So you're not, uh, you know, some people suggested you might be Satoshi Nakamoto, you previously said you're not, let, let no me ask. Much. You're not for sure. Would you, would, you, would you tell us if you were? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you think it's a feature or a bug that he's anonymous or she or they? It's an interesting kind of quirk of human history that there is a particular technology that is a completely anonymous inventor or creator. Well, I mean, you can you can look at the um, evolution of ideas um, before the launch of Bitcoin, and see who wrote, you know, about those ideas, um, and then I like I don't know exactly. Obviously, I don't know who who created Bitcoin for practical purposes, but the evolution of ideas is is pretty clear before that, and like it seems as though like Nick Szabo uh, is probably more than anyone else uh, responsible for the evolution of those ideas. So you know, he claims not to be Nakamoto, but I'm not sure that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, but he, he seems to be the one more responsible for the ideas behind Bitcoin than anyone else. So it's not perhaps like singular figures aren't even as important as the, the figures involved in the evolution of ideas that led to a thing. So yeah, yeah, it's, you know, most perhaps it's sad to think about history, but maybe most names will be forgotten anyway. What is a name anyway? It's a name, a name attached to an idea. What does it even mean, really? I think Shakespeare had a thing about roses and stuff. Whatever he said, <laughs> rose by any other name would smell as sweet. <laughs> I got Elon to quote Shakespeare. I feel I feel like I accomplished something today. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? <laughs> like. I'm gonna clip that out. Of the um, not, not, more temperate and more fair. <laughs> <laughs>
rather, I guess we'll just call them well-educated people have a trouble doing is admitting that they're wrong <laughs> or, you know, that they're, that they made a mistake or that they didn't know anything about money. You know, when you're, you're, you're the quote, like inventor or co-founder of PayPal and you get ousted from the company, <laughs> you know, you probably have a pretty big ego. It's probably hard to admit that you actually don't know anything about money. You don't know anything about money outside of the fiat system. You don't understand, um, that ultimately a superior form of money is completely immune to government capture. I mean, that would be a hard pill to swallow when you became the richest man on the world on government subsidies for, for bullshit, uh, green credits. So anyway, move, move, moving on from that. So like when, when Musk says, I don't understand smart contracts, <clears throat> that's fair. No one does. Um, there's an Oracle problem with inherent in smart contracts that hasn't been solved. It's probably not going to be solved. In the end, you need a human or, or a consciousness to uh, arbitrate these contracts. So moreover, most of most of the use cases for the contracts like NFTs, you know, shit like that, it's unnecessary. No one no one needs a contract uh, enforced by nothing uh, that points a digital signature to a JPEG, for example. There's absolutely no reason to have that on a blockchain. Uh, a lot of the use cases for these cryptos and smart contracts, NFTs, <clears throat> most of these things would be better suited for like a database. You know, they're not they're not truly decentralized. There's no reason for them to be on a blockchain. The blockchain was created, you know, for very specific use case um, deployed in Bitcoin very successfully. Um, there's there aren't very many other use cases for it. It's a very slow very lightweight uh, and, and, and but ever increasing um, software protocol. So yeah, I I agree with Elon there. There, there is really no point in, in getting to know blockchains or understanding them. Well, it does nothing to ensure like that artists are receiving royalties to put them on to put them on NFTs. It's, it's not binding as many like frustrated 13 year olds uh, getting their JPEGs stolen on Twitter uh, have found out uh, these are not contracts that are enforceable by any means by anyone other than the platforms that issued them and the small community of people, the very, very tiny community of people who agree to play by these silly rules. Um, data is by definition copyable. Just ignore NFTs, folks. That'd be my advice. Uh, NFTs are speculative garbage. They have no fundamentals. Um, you know, I will say when it comes to fundamentals, like what I mean specifically is they're totally susceptible to capture from all angles by individuals and governments alike. They are not decentralized in the slightest. Um, they are a solution uh, looking for a problem and they're a huge bubble. I, I think they're probably here to stay. People seem to enjoy them. Kids seem to really enjoy them. And I think they have a right to exist, but they exist in my mind more as like an IQ test um, and regulators are going to squash them uh, in one way or another. They're going to make it, they're going to make it difficult for all these other cryptocurrencies, all these NFTs, smart contracts, all this bullshit. Um, they're coming down hard on that. And I think uh, Gary Gensler couldn't be more vocal about that because they're securities, they're unregulated securities um, with insider interests dumping on greater and greater and greater fools. Uh, so anyway, Musk also in that clip, he talks about like antiquated fiat monetary technology. And I think he's really digging into the problem here when he says that the government quote effectively has editing privileges on the monetary database. So it's hundred percent true. Uh, we've allowed money to remain captured by the government for so many generations that we've forgotten what it was. Musk included, um, the, 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 the government's editing our money, they're inflating it, they're taxing it, they're confiscating it, they're telling you when you can and cannot use it. I don't know about you guys, but on the East Coast here, I mean, it's New Year's Eve, we're coming close to five o'clock, banks closed. You can't go get your money. <laughs> like, there's very few options. You you want to go to an ATM when the bank's closed? You got to go pay a fee to access your own money. It's just there's a reason Bitcoin rolls twenty four seven. You know, TikTok next block three hundred sixty five days a year, no holidays. 
no arbitrary breaks, no downtime at all. Um, no, no, no middleman, no third parties between you and your sovereign wealth. It's a beautiful thing. And, and I think until you've experienced it, you don't, you don't really realize how beautiful that is. Um, okay, let's get into some of these comments a little bit. What are you guys talking about? CC says NFTs are scams that are money grabs uh, and kids spending their money. And then Gleep Glorp says that's a hasty generalization. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think you're right, CC. I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of adults that are like heavy, heavy into the NFTs too. And there's there's a bit of money that's been made there, but I think people don't realize that you can send ads, uh, send uh, NFTs to yourself. You can buy them and bid up the price. And no one knows that you bid up the price and then sell it to some unsuspecting stranger who thinks like 30 people bid on this piece of art. It must be good. And, and you know, the arts, it's all terrible. Like you've seen it as fucking garbage. But uh, they, they so they buy the NFT for a million dollars and then, you know, no one buys it from them. They're stuck with this JPEG that's been copied uh, ad infinitum. And, you know, there's just no there's no regulation in the space. It's a mess. There's no use case for it to begin with. There's no reason to have a dis digital signature assigned to something. No one cares. No one's enforcing this uh, this agreement. It's not binding. I mean, we're gonna we're we're gonna go off on them. I I don't know. You guys take care of it in the comments. I'm tired of of ranting about uh, NFTs. Bitcoin Jester, though, is right. NFTs are definitely this cycle's ICOs, and in ten years from now, you're gonna feel like a fool. You should have just bought Bitcoin if you're buying NFTs. Um. So, basically. Getting back to the government, the government is putting conditions on who gets to use money and why your dollars are not yours. The only property you own in this life is Bitcoin, as far as I can tell, um, you know, as someone who's seen like eminent domain letters, you know, the, your house isn't yours, you don't pay taxes on that. It's impaired. Uh, your car is not yours. You pay all sorts of taxes and regulations and for licenses and parking and there's all kinds of impairments on, on on your car you know um things that you thought belonged to you the money in your bank account is not yours you don't even know how it's secured you don't understand it your gold's not yours it's held by a bank the only thing that's yours is the bitcoin in your cold storage custody so make two tw 2022 if you don't have any bitcoin yet uh make that the year that you you get some sovereign property and actually take ownership of something so getting back to Musk, uh, Musk believes there's merit to Dogecoin because it has, quote, higher transaction volume than Bitcoin. He calls Bitcoin's transaction volume comically low. However, while mentioning lightning in a breath during the interview, he somehow neglected to mention how lightning expands Bitcoin's transactional volume by theoretically millions of transactions per second. So there's no transaction volume problem at all in bitcoin where, where the, there once might have been but M musk is taking when he compares it to doge he's taking a trade-off as a decentralization a trade-off of decentralization for what appears to be unit bias uh, and a high transaction volume of, of dogecoin unfortunately he just doesn't know what he's talking about uh there's really no other way to put it Dogecoin is a copy paste project of Bitcoin with the parameters busted open and tweaked with that's been abandoned. Um, that sounds great, right? But in fact, it's terrible. Dogecoin is inflating indefinitely. No one runs Dogecoin nodes to protect the network. It's completely subject to attack and debasement and rule changes. Uh, you have no fundamental guarantee of property rights in Dogecoin. Um, you know, it's downright stupid that Musk continues to say things like, quote, Dogecoin is better than any monetary technology I've seen so far and seemingly just by accident. You know, it's a copy paste project of Bitcoin. I mean, if, if, if this is the most impressive monetary technology Elon Musk has seen, I cannot wait for someone to show him Bitcoin because I, I, <clears throat> I'm actually a little bit worried that, he, you know, why would it? He owned Bitcoin if he understands <clears throat> so precious little about it. So Dogecoin isn't even in the discussion of urgent monetary technology. We can put that one to rest. And uh, when Lex asks Elon whether he's Satoshi, as some of you in the in the 
in the comments pointed out, I mean, that surely has to be a joke. There are 12 year olds who understand Bitcoin better than Elon Musk. I've met them. I think Elon Musk is either being intellectually dishonest uh, to keep the price down or just enjoys watching the market move after he makes a statement. Um, I mean, it's the same old game, I think. And then at bottom, I think he just hasn't put the time in and uh, is used to people sort of just nodding soberly when, when he goes on about subjects. So, you know, he, he, he hasn't been checked. He hasn't, he hasn't been corrected. So it's, it's somewhat of a power trip. I don't hate Elon for this, but it's misleading to a lot of smooth brained investors. Like there's hundreds of thousands of people out there who are going to YOLO into Doge every time he says it's a better form of money than Bitcoin. And that's just not the case, right? So that dishonesty or that intellectual dishonesty or outright, you know, lying on his part, it's just, uh, it's not right. I mean, he has he has a right to do it and address his audience however he wants. But uh, that's why we're here correcting it today. The long, drawn out pauses he makes uh, when asked whether, like, it's a feature or a bug that Bitcoin's creator is anonymous. It's like it's like he seems to remember that intelligent people pause to think before answering questions. I mean, he bides his time. That was like a two minute pause before answering the question. Uh, and he does, in fact, deliver. He 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 actually did attribute much of the success of Bitcoin to Nick Sabo. And this is, was kind of a turning point for for Elon in the interview. Um, he attributed much of the success to Bitcoin uh, to early adopters who shaped and promoted the ideas so that it may survive and not, you know, undergo some sort of attack or, or just be forgotten altogether. Um, on a positive note, I will say it's actually impressive that Elon Musk knows who Nick Sabo is. That actually took me for a turn. I was like, well done, Elon. It looks like he's been doing a little bit of homework or something. Something got in there. Um, so he's not claiming Sabo is Nakamoto, as I saw some press outlets saying. If you go back and rewatch it, that's that's not what he says at all. He's not even saying Elon's not even saying that it matters who Satoshi was, which is important to understand. It's better we don't know who created Bitcoin in all cases for Satoshi and for Bitcoin. It's really better we don't meet this hero, in my opinion. And Musk seems to agree. I mean, he believes it's the evangelists and champions who kept it alive and explained the ideas early on who are historically significant. And I would agree with that. But he he ends this this interview with Lex, this Bitcoin and, and crypto babble talks that Lex has been hosting regularly by by quoting Shakespeare, who saying, you know, what does it matter who created Bitcoin? Like what's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, I think is the quote. And on that point, I think he's actually right on the money. Uh, it's it's important this idea of immaculate conception. Um I think it, it helps Bitcoiners sleep well at night, but it, on the other hand, it also keeps, you know, I talked to Eric Weinstein, he told me it keeps it up, it keeps him up at night. Eric Weinstein told me that. He said it keeps him up at night uh, that he doesn't know who made Bitcoin. <laughs> but it's one of the, I think I think it's a feature, not a bug. I, I, I disagree with him. I mean, I, he, he also posited that perhaps it was the CIA who, who made Bitcoin and there's a back door to SHA-256 that we're unaware of. Um, I don't know about all that. Uh, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think of that? Let's see. Let's see what you guys are talking about with you right here. Bitcoin Jester seems to think Nick Sabo is actually Satoshi. That's interesting. Um, so anyone else close to Nakamoto is Lee Sasson. Yeah, I don't know. You guys don't have any real compelling arguments about who's Satoshi in the comments right now, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna reward you anyway. So don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. I'm happy we hit over a hundred likes today. Um, I want to go into this new year strong. So please, if you have not, ooh, 113. Thank you. Please uh, like and subscribe, guys. We're wrapping up for the day, but I want to drop at least. Oh no, I'm coming back. Okay, I'm back. I want to drop at least one more code in the. Uh, <clears throat> in the comments and on screen for give you guys a chance to win some Bitcoin. Um, I hope whoever gets this, it's, uh, you know, some of the, the most memorable Bitcoins of 2021, this free Bitcoin we're giving out right now. So, um, yeah, we'll put that on screen. There's a QR code. Make sure you get the, the carrot app. 
you know, help help carry it, get the, every download possible before uh, we go into 2022 and put the code into uh, the Carrot app and redeem some Bitcoin. And when you hit the withdrawal limit, please withdraw your, your Satoshis. So, and I also, we've heard some, I guess, complaints or, or criticism about this uh, withdrawal limit on the Carrot app, guys. That's there so that people don't hack it. It's important to, uh, to keep that there so that people actually do have a Carrot in front of them and are incentivized to go read more about Bitcoin, tune into the stream, hit the limit, and then they can withdraw. We're not hoping you forget about it so that we keep your Bitcoin. Just just keep hanging in there, you know, read articles, um, you know, earn carrot and uh, we'll give you more, we'll give you more codes. The more people that like and share the stream, the more Bitcoin we're gonna give out. I think I've held true to that. Uh, we uh, went from 500 up to a thousand sats just today to round off the year. I mean, it's a great, um, yeah, the so the limits on withdrawal they're they're a great way to prevent fraud. So just to wrap that up, and uh, yeah, guys, I look forward to talking to you in the new year. We'll be back Monday, I believe, at two p.m. Eastern. Um, outside of that, we'll be shooting Tuesday as well, and then hopefully we're gonna come back with an all new art design and package soon. New guests, we're gonna have Sailor on soon. I hope within uh, the next few weeks. Um, and a number of other exciting guests so thanks for joining us guys please again like and subscribe share the stream with your friends the videos dropping soon as always buy the dip uh put your bitcoin in cold storage have a good new year's eve Yep. Yeah.